and welcome back. I'm Nicole Edmond, artist and art educator. Today we're going to be talking about using watercolors to create a wet into wet technique uh, and create our own unique individual illustration. So um, I call this, um, I guess using a, a silhouette of an animal or, or any other shape that you'd be interested in doing. So we can create a galaxy and so here I have a galaxy chicken or creating more of like a tie-dye effect and then embellishing the final result with a white gel pen. Let's see how the techniques go. So we're ready to get started and let's get watercolor. To get started, we're gonna need a few pencils. If you're using an artist pencils, we're gonna go ahead and have a 4B and a 2H. So one's a little softer, the other one a little bit harder. Then I suggest we have two brushes. I like to use the number six and the zero as our round brushes, our water, our palette, and a nice little spray bottle. A spray bottle is a great way to rehydrate your palette. It makes it a lot faster. Then starting with our silhouette, we're gonna take our 4B pencil and I'm going to um, just add a little bit of this graphite to the back of it, right around the outside edges of what I'm going to trace. So this is a really quick and easy way to transfer an image. So if you have a drawing you've done already, or you're using something you've printed off of the internet, that you can easily transfer this image onto your paper. So here I have the image, I have placed it down onto the paper and then using my pencil, and just going over the outside edges of it. And what that's gonna do is transfer the graphite that we placed on the other side right down onto the paper. It does it really nice and light, and which is perfect for watercolor. I also suggest you do not press really hard thinking that that's the only way to get it down onto the paper because you don't wanna create any sort of dent onto the paper. So here you see it's nice and light. And then going back in using the 4H pencil in case there's any areas that didn't transfer really cleanly or you wanna adjust so like here on the comb I didn't like the way that that silhouette actually showed the comb for this chicken or the way the beak looks so I'm gonna make those little adjustments here and adding in a little bit of a space in between the legs and creating that little bit of separation and fixing a few other details up then you can go ahead and erase uh, as much as you can I like to tell my students you know go ahead and erase your drawing now and it surprises everybody but that's actually the best thing to do you want to try and erase your lines down as much as possible so that you have very little erasing to do at the end so remembering that the watercolor is transparent and will show any pencil lines that are remaining underneath of the watercolor So the next step is to wet the entire inside area of our outline. We want to have this nice and wet so that way when we start applying the watercolors we're not getting any sort of dry edges that we're going to have to deal with. It also allows the watercolor to bleed into the water and create some really interesting effects. So here you can see that the surface is now all nice and shiny and wet and we're going to start introducing color nice and slowly into our wet area. So as you drop the color in, you notice I'm not brushing, it's just kind of a dropping the color into the different wet areas, allowing those colors to touch each other and bleed and blend a little bit. You want the water to do a lot of the work for you. If you do too much brushing, the colors are going to blend and get overworked and you're gonna lose the vibrancy of them. You want to keep them so that the only the edges where they touch each other is where the blending is happening. If you do blend or over blend them, what you'll start to notice is you'll get uh, more of these kind of brownish gray neutral colors within your work. And once that's happened, unfortunately with watercolor, there's not much going back with it. So take your time and just drop your color in. done we just have to let it dry and then we're going to move into adding some embellishments over top of our watercolor using a gel pen so this is my favorite white opaque gel pen this is a uniball signo gel pen you can get it um, usually you can buy one or you can get a pack of three it does a beautiful job of drawing over top of any of our watercolors. You don't want to go back in and overwork 
the pen and try and do multiple layers of it or try to make the line any bigger than it comes out because you will notice that it, it merges a little bit with the watercolor that's underneath. You also don't want to press really hard with it as that the pigment likes to just flow out of it so if you just press the paper lightly you're going to notice it flows out beautifully. So here I've decided with this tie-dye chicken here that we're going to put on top of it just like a triangle geometric type different pattern. So playing around with triangles of all different sizes and, uh, and filling up the entire design. So I'm going to have the white lines that make up the design go right off and outside of the um, silhouette of the image of the chicken so that it looks as if the paper color is merging back into the artwork itself. traditional galaxy technique so a little bit more of a uh, dark base we're gonna start exactly the same way that we did the more tie-dye chicken technique and we've transferred our silhouette and our basic shape and form is on the page we are going to add in a little bit of water at a time here so instead of working completely wet into wet we're gonna work wet edges so I started off by creating a little bit of a palette just a little test card just making sure what colors we were interested in using and just dropping in the color and as you notice as we continue here adding the colors in that you can go ahead and add them into each other so as one color is wet you can still layer them in just as by dropping them in that allows the color and the water to help them all flow together the last step that we're going to do is I have a little spritz bottle we're going to take that spritz bottle and we're going to spray from afar um, the entire painting and that's going to leave just teeny tiny water droplets on there. It's going to separate the pigment a little and leave the depth and dimension of stars. Now our painting is all dry, it's time to add stars. So I'm going to use either a Liquitex gouache, which is a little bit acrylic based. We also have a regular gouache, which is water based. And then there's the PH Dr. Martin's ink, white India ink 
which is more permanent based. So between these three, I've noticed that the opacity level is about equal. So it's really about, um, do you want something that is gonna go on and be more permanent or do you want something that might be a little bit more water soluble? So this is the, the gouache here using this one, which is the water soluble one. It is like a tempera paint. It is very much an opaque watercolor. So the Liquitex acrylic and the PH Martin's ink, those two are going to be more permanent and you do have to make sure that you rinse them out of your brushes when you are complete. So to get the little stars and speckles, I like to water the paints down just a teeny bit. You won't want to do too much or they'll get too transparent. And so here, loading up the brush and then I like hitting it with another brush. It just spatters off really tiny, fine little uh, dots and every once in a while you'll get a few bigger ones. And I think it's much better than trying to look like throw the brush and try and get the paint to come out of it. So. And it also helps control not getting it so far all over your table. I really like overloading my galaxy scenes with stars. Just thinking about, you know, if you're really up in space there, there's gonna be them all over the place. And then any little white dots that I can see afterwards, just like picking them up and done. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed learning more about this wet into wet technique and that you've created your own and unique watercolor galaxy or tie dye effect. And maybe you've even enjoyed bringing a little bit of that white gel pen into your illustration to really make it your own. So thank you very much. And if you would like to join in more of my painting tutorials, please click the subscribe and maybe that little bell there and I will send you um, a notification next time I post a new video. Thank you and joy and get painting.